represent many different things. The Jets logo, for example, has very strong associations for us as Winnipegers and for Manitobans. So we got our first NHL team, the Jets, in 1979. And this logo started to represent for us feelings of pride, passion, community, and a sense of shared identity. However, in 1996, we lost the Jets, and the same image started to represent things like loss, disappointment, sadness, and the end of an era. So for 15 years, we waited for something to give us those feelings back. And last year, we finally got it. Our wishes came true, and the Jets came back. So if you're not too sure how big of a deal that was for us here, I'm going to show you a short video. Looking forward to the challenges ahead. People care about hockey here. The world of big Jets. Looking forward to the good year. Welcome home. This is a wonderful time. Welcome back. It has been kind of a dream of mine. It's like a Stanley Cup final. We are your world of big Jets. Welcome home. So the Jets' return is proof that miracles do happen. The old can become new again, and we can start to associate new images with our pride and passion. So I'm going to tell you another story, a more recent story about loss and revitalization. And in order to do that, I have to tell you a little bit about myself. So my name is Kale. I'm an Aboriginal youth, and I grew up in the 80s and 90s in the north end of Winnipeg. So naturally, I have very strong feelings of love and nostalgia for the images that I, I grew up around, the images that surrounded me, the images that I used over and over in my visual development that made me who I am today an artist, and an art teacher. So last year, I had the wonderful opportunity to become an art teacher in my home neighborhood. I gave an art lesson on Photoshop uh, to show how my community reacted to images, how we used images in our community, and the reactions that it provoked in my students really started getting me thinking about, you know, what does that image mean? How does it make us feel? And ultimately, how does it re 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 represent us and who we are? So I'm going to take you on a short world tour here. I'm going to show you the same slideshow that I showed my students. Um, I showed them banners from all over the world. So with this one here, we went to England. So this is called the Ealing Summer Festival. So as you can see, there's flowers. It's fun, it's colorful, it's exciting. And the reason that it exists is to advertise an event. Next, we went to Melbourne, Australia, and this is for a fringe festival. So again, it's to advertise an event. There's quite a few of them, get people excited. So this one has cultural reasons for existing. You might think that this one may be in Japan, but it's actually in LA. We Googled it. Uh, so it's welcoming, colorful again. So now we went to San Francisco. So welcome to Little Saigon, the, the banner says, it's colorful. And what we gathered from this one is that the image in the background, the, the shop, perhaps maybe this is a shopping district somewhere, you know, it's promoting the, business of the uh, businesses of the area, so you can go here and go shopping. So I also thought that it was important to show them political reasons for having banners. So these banners were put up during the American election for Barack Obama. And so the red, white, and blue colors represented hope and progress for the American people, and this image became very popular. A lot of people wore it on t-shirts. So now that we're back in Canada, this, this image was actually taken in Calgary. So I thought this one was particularly cool to show to my students because there are no words on it. We don't really, you know, we can't really tell what it's for. So maybe perhaps it's safe to assume that it's for simply city beautification, which would be fabulous. So now I'm going to take you back to Winnipeg, and I'm going to show you the iconic golden boy that we have here, and show you the Manitoba Spirited Energy banners. So zooming in, you can see they say Manitoba Spirited Energy, French and English, to show some of the communities that we have here. And we thought it must be very difficult to represent just the over one million people that live in Manitoba, so maybe that's why they used a non-representational image, you know, some colors and some shapes. So this is near Polo Park Shopping Mall, again, shopping. Um, and this one is for a different purpose. It's to commemorate the fact that we have had a different sports team, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, here in Winnipeg for 80 years. 
So getting closer to my neighborhood now, um, this, one was take, this picture was taken on Main Street. And zooming in, you can see it says, discover your north end. So the words discover your north end sort of made, me, made us think maybe people haven't discovered the north end yet. Maybe, maybe that's what we want. And in the background, you can see like a sepia-toned photo of an older styled building. So we thought maybe this implies that there's, there's a rich history here. So what I'm going to show you next is the banners where I'm from. Not welcoming, not colorful, not cultural, not historical, not current, not promoting the businesses of the area, and certainly not representative of the people of my community. So I'm going to take you on a short Selkirk Avenue banner tour now. Zooming out, you can see now we're on the corner of Powers and Selkirk in Winnipeg. Um, we are standing beside our beloved bell tower. Um, that's actually the original bell from the original city hall from 1886 in Winnipeg. And it's domed by the Rainbow Dome, which is tattered and actually has pigeons living in it currently. Next, uh, we, do have, we did have some other banners on Selkirk. Uh, this is what they look like. If you look very closely, it actually says Gallery on the Avenue 92, which at this point last year in my slideshow meant that these banners had been up for 19 years. And that's actually older than any of the students that I had in my classroom. So that meant that these were the only banners that these students had ever known to represent their community. Uh, we also, we did, a, we did a street cleanup and we found one of these banners under a bunch of garbage and, and muck. And when we pulled it out and we discovered that it was actually originally navy blue in a red color rather than a, a sun-bleached light blue and pink. So to give you some context of what they look like, you can actually see that most of the banners have blown away and sort of leaving like these skeletal prong metal pieces out from the lampposts. The, one that's, the ones that do remain are sort of sagging, blowing sadly in the wind. So in comparison to the world tour of banners, my students became very angry with what we had. They started to ask, why do we have, seemingly, the ugliest banners in the entire world? <laughs> <laughs> they started talking about stereotypes and negativity and the things that they had to put up with. Like people thinking that they were possibly violent, to be feared, or gang members. So unfortunately, my neighborhood does have a tough, it has a tough reputation right now. So what I'm going to do is, to, to prove this to you, is what most young people do, like myself, when we want to know or prove something, I'm going to Google it. So I took a screen capture of myself Googling North End Winnipeg just to see what the autofill came up with. So as you can see, it comes up with crime, history, dangerous, and map. So I thought I would do it backwards also just to see what would come up. So Winnipeg North End, crime, restaurants, map, and shooting this time come up. So a lot of really wonderful TED Talks, they talk about statistics and give you know, really good examples to nail down their points with evidence. And I thought about doing that too. But then I thought, no, this TED Talk is about attitudes, reputation, and perceptions. And none of those things are necessarily based on facts or reality. And besides, facts and reality are not static or objective. They're actually, in this context, they're completely malleable and subjective. So media like the news, the newspaper, and unfortunately the internet too. They represent an outsider's point of view, which is one thing, but what's more important is the insider point of view, my students, how they think about themselves. So I started to ask myself as an educator, a leader of young people, and a member of a narrowly defined community, what can we do to change this? How can we change the story of how we see ourselves and how do we do that? So what we started to do was, we started to think about what does, what does the community look like? What do we want it to look like? What do we want to say to the people who live here? What do we want to see in the future for ourselves? We started to Google words and images like love, hope, pride, diversity, and we hoped and dreamed that in the future that when we Googled Winnipeg North End, that images like this would come up instead. I'm going to share with you now what the students came up with. First and foremost, they wanted to celebrate the cultural diversity of the area. So what they did was they wrote community and culture. They chose the, the maple leaf to represent multiculturalism, and they chose some symbols that represented the different cultures that had lived in the, in the area historically for many years. Secondly, they agreed that like me, 
They really loved their community. They felt an inherent love for their surroundings. So they chose our beloved bell tower, as tattered and rugged as it was, and they drew hearts all over it to reclaim it and show everybody how much they really did love their community. And last but not least, they wanted to address the stereotypes that the media had vandalized their reputations with. They thought, wouldn't it be really cool if we put one of us up there, maybe holding an x-ray over our heart, maybe to show everybody that we have our, our hopes and our dreams? They wanted to show their innate and human qualities as young people. So since the banners have been up, they went up in January 2012, um, so they haven't been up for all that long. Um, one of them actually fell down. And over a 48-hour period, the city of Winnipeg reported having seven phone calls come in to say, the banner fell down, what, like, what are we going to do about it? Oh my gosh. So, um, seven phone calls may not sound like a lot, but if you think of the 19-year span that the old banners were up, it sort of makes you wonder how many phone calls came in then. So I'm going to take those seven phone calls as proof that the community has accepted the banners and believes in the ideals that they stand for. So, as a North Ender, I wanted my students to be proud when they said that they came from the North End. And as a teacher, I wanted to give them the tools and the resources that they needed to make their community a place that they deserved. I hope that the visions of my students will reach across the streets of Winnipeg to create hope and pride in the current and future citizens of our city. This project made me realize that we all have the power to inspire the next generations. So let's empower them to know that they can be whoever they want to be and that they can form their own worlds into beautiful places with powerful messages. So the theme of TEDx Manitoba this year is what if. I'd like to thank my students from last year for having the passion and dedication and courage and dreams to answer their own what if, and in the process transform their neighborhood for the better. So what I've told you one day is actually just one story among many of the students that I've been working with. This year, they actually decided that they wanted to start their own newspaper. So this is just a little photo um, of something that's about to come up very soon. They wanted to actually address the media and portray themselves more accurately. Very admirable. Um, another thing that they did was they started an anti-violence, anti-gang movement. So they meet every Friday, they have a meal, they talk to each other, the young and the old come out, even small children in strollers, it's very wonderful. But that's another TED Talk. So I'm going to leave you with one last thing now. Over a hundred years ago, Louis Riel said, my people will sleep for 100 years, but when they awake, it will be the artists who give them their spirit back. And I wanted to take this opportunity to tell you that my people are awake now and that they've had beautiful dreams that are about to come true. Thank you. Thank you.